All right, well, welcome to the BIB Podcast, episode 300. Today we are at Spring Hill, one of our favorite locations for a podcast, David, and we're on episode 300. This is a big, uh, it's a big milestone. We kind of chatted uh, previously what this 300th episode would be like, so we're going to talk to, I know a lot of people would probably be curious as to what um, kind of our history, David, where we first met and uh, kind of how we started getting to know each other a long yeah. way back. <laughs> yeah. But you started, we've kind of briefly touched on it before, but you kind of started, um, um, it's either 03 or 04 yep. or the beginning of 04, something like that, I know. So mm-hmm. uh, it's been a long, been a long time. Yeah, we met, um, in fact, we were doing, this was back in the days where I didn't know, I literally didn't even know how to even write anything on a website. I couldn't do anything. And I was back doing a, doing some uh, career coaching at the time. And I had a site called, it was called Career Calling. Um, it's not up anymore, but it was one of the first sites I ever did. And my wife was doing, you know, Rachel, she was doing all of the, HTML, I mean, back then it was like HTML and, wow. and uh, building a site on, you know, dial-up back in, I mean, this was back in 2002. Um, and then we met, I forgot how we met during that time, but you actually called her. I don't know if you found me through 48 days yeah. or what. Yeah, I saw, I was, I was really interested in their program. Yeah. And, I mean, I was in college, uh, just, I was in my early 20s. And, right. and I, um... I wanted to. I, I saw you guys were in Tennessee. That's mm-hmm. what it was. I saw oh, okay. you guys were in Tennessee, and that's yep. why I reached out because I thought, oh wow, somebody's actually like semi-local right. or whatever. So right. that's why I reached out, and then I talked to Rachel. I don't know if it was the phone that the number that you guys had on the site or whatever, but yeah. I talked to her, and then um, from what Rachel, from what I guess what I've heard before is Rachel thought when we're talking, she thought that I was. Um, uh, like a newbie yeah. at marketing stuff and I actually was <laughs> yeah. but I was a junkie right. I didn't implement a lot of stuff yeah, but I but I knew a lot of stuff or, yeah, yeah. I, and so um, anyway but then she realized like I was more knowledgeable yep. than she thought and then she's like hey you should talk to my husband mm-hmm. and then um, he actually comes to Murfreesboro or something yeah. and so I guess we talked yep. and then we met at this coffee shop in Murfreesboro mm-hmm. and um and I then, forgot you know, what the name of that place was. But I don't even met, know if it was it's like still downtown Murfreesboro, mm-hmm. little coffee shop, and we got together, man. And that was like, I think it must have been 2003, 2000. I can't remember now mm-hmm. if it's 2003 or 2004. But um, dang, man, it's been a while. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you you've been coming to Murfreesboro mm-hmm. um, about every other week. Yeah. And then so. We've, that's how we it actually started. Together, Panera, we were getting together at Panera in Murfreesboro. If you've mm-hmm. ever been to Murfreesboro, we were getting together at uh, a Panera there. We get there, we get together. We'd meet for lunch, or mm-hmm. um, I mean, this has been an ongoing tradition for I don't know how long, but we'd meet and just kind of um, we'd bring you know we'd meet there with our laptops and you know get some work done. <laughs> Be there for like six hours or some crazy. <laughs> thing. What's funny is I've noticed, and you probably have too, but as yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is, if it's just something changed or whatever. Yeah. But like, as I've gotten a little bit older, I get tired, and I'm like, man, and my brain starts. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah. I'm like, dude. So yeah, uh, we would leave when they were closed. Like they would close, yeah. and we'd still be there, and they were cool with it or whatever because they yeah. knew us and yeah. stuff. But uh, but we would work. You know, we yeah. would just work on our projects. Yeah. You know, for for many yeah. many hours or whatever. Um, in and so Talked all kinds of interesting people that would come in get hit up by network marketers oh yeah yeah <laughs> do you keep your options open you know um do do you know anybody that wants to make extra money you know they would come up to us yeah so yeah um i have an opportunity right, and right. all that stuff so, so yeah big ground floor hmm? and, <laughs> and not many people i found like business and marketing and stuff as much as i do and like yeah. jonathan does and right. so that's what's cool that's what we um share together it's mm-hmm. just because we so we're always reading and watching and and so we're that's what you know that's how this these podcasts kind of started with yeah. us because we just started recording what we would talk about anyway yeah yeah you know, kind of our together. general discussion on like whether it's a book that we've read or mm-hmm. whether it's um a, an, an actual 
you know client that we were dealing mm-hmm. with or a, a project that we're working on and getting some feedback and get some ideas for a new um you know something that we're getting ready to launch or mm-hmm. you know whatever i mean we just you know that's been our time to just kind of yeah. talk about it chat brainstorm implement mind map whatever you name yeah. it yeah all right, so what I want to do today, I thought we want to do something really special uh, for the 300th episode, and that's mm-hmm. why, I, you know, of course, that's why I dressed up, too, uh, for the <laughs> 300th episode. And um, I thought, man, that's a lot of life experience, a lot of business experience, yep. 300 episodes over the course of five years. Yeah. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting just to ask Jonathan some questions, just some random questions about um, his experience from it from best guest to worst guest to mm-hmm. um any takeaways that type of thing so um so what's one thing that um i'm just gonna just fireball different sure. questions at you sure. um what is probably your favorite and it's probably gonna be hard to narrow it down to one yeah. so let's just say top two or three guests of all time that is there any episode that you just like, man, I just love and I like yeah. the guest and all that? David Dutton would be my all-time <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> right, right. Yep. <laughs> Didn't pay him to say that either. <laughs> no, actually, these are fun. I, these are, you know, I like – I'll give you my personal favorite before I do that. I'll tell you, some of the best the, – the, the episodes that I've gotten the most comments on and the most feedback from emails from listeners have been these right here. Yeah. Just doing these little segments of you and I just talking, you know, talking, you know, sharing off the top of our mm-hmm. head like we always do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and those, I, you know, those aren't always my favorites um, because we talk about this all the time. Yeah. This, so is, yeah. this is nothing. We're just hitting us. the record button now. <laughs> but these are, these are great because, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that like to listen to us just kind of. Um, randomly tied like the segment we did on the uh, psychology of influence we got some really good good comments oh yeah on really that. good feedback um but my personal favorite I, I love stories and you know people that will go r- really far and delve really deep and share their pro- own personal stories i think one of the biggest ones that stands out to me on a personal level this one ranks up there probably in the top five and i can't I can't exactly say it'd be the number one, but the, I right. did two episodes with Antonio Centino. Oh. And you remember that guy, yeah. the uh, guy, the real man, real style. Yeah. And I just really loved his own personal story. You know, former military guy and really just, you know, um, looking at a, a, you know, looking at the market out there for a specific need, seeing that he couldn't find you know, tailored suits or information on, you know, how to, you know, men's style and finding a tailored suit and just, just when he needed, you know, when he needed that information and needed that. So he decided to fill a need, but really just exploded it by applying the, the YouTube effect of started creating like just, you know, crazy amount of videos. Just really. Yeah, he did over a hundred. Oh, well, now it's like. It was like 200 yeah, something like two, that two first. Hundred. Yeah, the first year. And, but he would knock out, you know, he wouldn't do them like every day. He'd just knock out like four, you know, four or mm-hmm. five a day. And we got to remember, like, it was in his basement, too. Yeah, yeah. And he had, like, a plumbing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was not the best environment. Yeah, um, he had plumbing pipes, like, right over his head. He said, you didn't see them. <laughs> They're right over his head. Yeah. And he always had to shoot really, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I remember that. Yep. At 4 o'clock in the morning because he has, like, two or three little girls. Mm-hmm. And just so people don't go to the bathroom and it's right. flushing, and right. you hear that in the video, right. yeah, that's the only time he could do it. Yep. And I thought that was and, th- that and that's was cool. why I like those videos. That's why I like those stories because people don't say, "Oh, it was easy. I just did this, and it was just everything worked out perfect." No, I mean, here's a guy that literally you had. First of all, you have to have the discipline to get up, and he would treat it just like going to a job. You get up at four thirty in the morning, you dress. You know, he dress. He's got to wear a suit. You know, for yeah. these. Um, or dress nicely for these videos so he literally would treat it like that he had everything mapped out his uh his blackboard or whiteboard of points that he had up you know in front of him when he did his videos he would have all of that you know make sure that he would cover each of his points he had everything i mean and maybe it was it it goes to reflect his military experience but everything was dress right dress and perfect and and he had everything organized you know but it was it was still difficult you know he had to plan around the difficulties of having you know shooting videos down in the basement 
when somebody flushes the you know if he de- if he waits too late somebody's getting up to use the restroom flushes the toilet and you hear water running through the pipes you know yeah <laughs> and so you know all of those things but he worked around that and literally created in that first uh you know that first year 200 and something episodes to, mm-hmm. you know i think it was like two, 250 200 mm-hmm. something you know i forgot how many but had it over um you know, a million views that first year, you know, yeah. from that. But here's the fo- the best part about that was the follow-up where I followed up with him a year later and he had only done, I asked him a year later on a follow-up interview, how many, um, how many videos have you done this past year? He said only 32, but literally he'd only done 32 video, only 32 videos, but his traffic, he had gone up to, um, like, uh, 4 million views and yeah. had like, you know, 20,000 subscribe. you know, had, I mean, it was God. just amazing the number of subscribers that shot up, but it just went up to that, you know, he put all that work in that initial year and didn't really have to do that kind of, you know, that amount because his, all those videos that he had created was just, you know, going, going viral, you know, so wow. he could kind of let the foot off the gas. And that was just a great story on just what it takes to create content, the discipline, if you really want to create the, this, I mean, doing stuff like this, you really got to be intentional about it and, you know, do it as often as possible, get it out there. And, um, his videos are great. He offers a lot of great content. I, I tell you some of, I mean the bet, like I said, the best ones are the stories. Mm-hmm. Um, any, trying, any other stories that like stood out in your mind? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of, um, I'm trying to think about, you know, this one, uh, you know, that we were just talking about the, um, uh, the guy, that I interviewed just two days ago that has created a site, uh, you know, created the website on county jail, uh, dot net, I believe. I mean, here's a guy that it was just a fascinating interview. Uh, here's a guy that created a website and decided to, the way he created his content was to have former inmates write reviews about county jails all across the country. You know, I don't care what county you're in, but these aren't federal prisons or, uh, or state prisons. These are just county, your local county jail, like Rutherford County here in Tennessee. And, uh, in my, in my neck of the woods would be Knox County, but he, he had, he would compile all that. He would pay former inmates $25 for a submission and it had to meet certain requirements, but that was his content. You know, he totally automated it. Um, he initially started taking, doing interviews like this, but it was too time consuming. It wasn't automated. He didn't like that. So he actually wrote a script or had somebody write a script so that they can just post it on his site and completely automate that. I mean, that was a cool story. Yeah. You know, something that's totally unique that you never thought of. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, just cool stories like that. All right. So I don't want you to list the name cause you could get in trouble, <laughs> but what is, I don't even know if we can even do this. I'm trying to think of the worst. Uh, oh, all right. I, I tell you what, tell me the worst interview that you had. And you don't mention the person's name or website, but obviously, what is the worst <laughs> one? I think I know. Uh-huh. Um, you interviewed somebody that apparently somebody taught to be scripted. Oh, yeah. That's but the it, one I was thinking That is about. the one? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, so, and I won't. She was like, um, and, and I won't mention her name, but I'll just tell you, she's an ebook coach. And this was back. I, in fact, this was even back when um, Russell and I, we were doing the podcast on Blog Talk Radio. And she literally got upset and, like, almost cut the interview uh, well, know, back up a little bit. How yeah. did it even happen? Like, so, like, well, she, right, so you're she, on the yeah, interview. She wanted me to. Um, she obviously wanted us. Uh, she she wanted me to ask these certain questions, and she sent me um, certain questions that, or certain bullet points that she wanted me to ask on, you know, writing ebooks. And I'm just, I don't work that way. You know, it's just, you know, I want it to be real. You know, yeah, I wanted us to talk, talk about and it and have a conversation. And I literally, and I can't remember, it's been so long ago, um, probably yeah. four years ago, and I can't remember um, what specific question I asked, but I asked it just a, a, a legitimate probably, question. Yeah, I was going to say, probably a normal question. Yeah, a question that was else. reasonable um, yeah. for, for her expertise that I didn't throw her a, a curveball or anything. And boy, she really got upset, you know. And, and How did I she could, react? Um, uh, she, yeah, well, she was just very curt with me and very short. And like after that, oh yeah, yeah, like and, you could tell the tone yeah. like just changed. Yeah, yeah. And then she just she cut. I mean, she just cut me short on a couple of things. And 
I don't know. It was just you could tell from that point, from the point that that happened, it, it was changed. And all I wanted, my whole feeling from that point on, was just to get through this interview. And literally, we were scheduled to do a follow up interview. It was supposed to be a two part um, interview, and I didn't, I didn't follow up because I was. And she had, at, she emailed me and said, "When are we going to do the?" Oh, the, she uh, even <laughs> followed up. Yeah. Like, man, how yeah. that, that's not awkward yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so, um, and so that was probably my worst interview yeah. now i'll share with you my worst experience okay podcasting was um uh never will forget it willie crawford uh, I, I, see, I thought that was coming yeah <laughs> willie crawford man we had worked um i was so nervous about this interview too and <laughs> um because i'd never willie crawford was like somebody i had uh I'd looked up, you know, read some of his books and loved reading all of his like information stuff that he put out. And, and he was even in your book, you know, internet empires. So, um, you know, put, you know, and, and the fact is I had made, I had made an extra effort on blog talk radio to, um, uh, to literally upgrade, you know, blog talk radio has got a free version and they, they've got a paid for version that you can use, um, you can actually use Skype through. So we had just upgraded for that very reason, uh, just to so I, I wanted it to sound good and everything. And <clears throat> literally, I will never forget. I got on. Russell was still on just the call in, but I wanted to get on the Skype, you know, side and do it, and so it would sound great. Um, but literally, my side of the the mic, my sound was awful, and <clears throat> it was so bad that Russell was trying to help me out. And trying to, you know, interject as many questions as he could to keep me from talking because my 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 voice was just my sound, the sound from my end was just oh, horrible, man. <laughs> and it was just like I was like, man, I had wor- I looked forward to this interview so much, you know, talking to him, and it was just like it just bombed really. And he was re- very cordial. Yeah, about he's, a, it. he's a nice he's guy. He's a super nice guy, but it was just embarrassing. You know, you, you get your, you know, you like, you get that chance and then something like that happens. And it was, that was like a turning point for me at that point is when I said, you know what? Um, I never will forget that, you know, having that happen. And then shortly be- it was either before or after having an interview with Cliff Ravenscraft about how he did his podcast those two things were the things that set me in motion to like totally change the way I did do things. You know, yeah. get the audio, the the whole equipment. I spent, you know, probably fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars on all the audio equipment just to getting getting it set up just the mm-hmm. way I wanted it. Well, the one thing because you knew you were gonna you wanted to do this. Yeah. You know, seriously. Seriously. And yeah. The one thing I got to give you props on that I've noticed. We've been friends for a long time. Is uh, <laughs> is uh, you're real consistent. I mean, I know that's a big thing to you, mm-hmm. and you can tell. It's called, I always say, uh, consistency trumps quality. And yeah. that doesn't mean, and when I say that, I always have to preface, I always, where I have to say, you know, follow it up, was like, I don't mean you should just put out consistent crap, but right. it just means sometimes you can have, your content doesn't have to be as spectacular if you just do it on a regular basis. Yeah. And you just kind of drip, 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 you know, get mm-hmm. it out there on a regular basis because people will grow to appreciate your the fact that you're out there every week and consistent mm-hmm. about it. I've had more emails, I think, that have, have applauded our consistency and just being out there on a regular basis doing the stuff. Um, probably just as many on that side as the people that say, man, your content's great. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's but, you know, Because you know, we've had time and time again, there's a podcasters that get started and they start strong. And they put out really good stuff, but then um, either they get bored with it or it's, you know, they run out of topics. They feel like they've run out of topics. And I feel like I never run out of topics. I think stories are unique. Oh, yeah. If you interview people about stories, you should never run out of content. You know, if it's, you know, if you make it about not just giving facts mm-hmm. and being salesy and mm-hmm. not doing sales pitches or anything in your podcast, but literally telling stories and, um, you know, making it about the other person. So, mm-hmm. anything that you would have done different? You know, looking back now. Yeah, I I think about that a lot, and I think if I were starting a podcast over today, Dave, I would probably not do this podcast. And um, the reason being, and and I don't plan on stopping this. You know, I don't, we're going to keep doing this podcast. If I were doing it today, though, I would totally segment this thing. You to know, be like, into uh, a to specific 
uh, probably make it towards a specific industry, uh, make it more specific. Uh, you know, even though we target this, this shows for beginner, beginner internet business podcast, I think that you got so many segments and niches today. You could really do well just owning a niche. Now, I've just stuck, but the fact that I've just stuck with it, um, I've been able to build this show. But anybody starting out today, if you were starting out today with a brand new podcast and had zero episodes, then I would say, fine, hone in on your niche. Just like my buddy, um, you know, um, Eric Keith, that, uh, he's a listener and comes to our uh, our meetups. You know, I told him he wanted to do a marketing podcast, and I said I suggested that he do one on. You know, he's got a plumbing or his family's been in the plumbing industry, and I said, man, why not a marketing podcast for plumbers, right? Instead of just a marketing podcast, you're you're competing in a huge, you know, a huge ocean <laughs> of other podcasters that are talking about marketing. I said, why not? T- why not start one? I'll bet your competition. You probably have almost no competition doing a marketing podcast and you know for the plumbing industry and he didn't you know he had i think he said there was one other guy doing a uh, plumbing podcast on a weekly basis so you know and i've often thought about doing you know in addition to this you know relaunching you know my um my old podcast my veterinary podcast that i had um number of episodes and you know putting more content out on that you know just because of the segment and i don't think there's much competition but um but you know, I think I think that's it's easier to build faster. You know, if you want to build your brand and if you want to build traffic to it, I think it's easier to do it if you really are targeted in on a certain industry or a certain theme or niche. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. because there's still a, now podcasting has exploded yeah, it has. in 2014. Yeah. Now, probably a lot of them are going to fizz out. Yeah. You know, because you'll go to iTunes, you'll see there's like yeah. 12 episodes. Yep. And that's it. Well, yeah. Cliff, Cliff Ravenscraft says that if you most podcasters and I don't know I don't know where he gets the numbers from but he says no, most podcasters never pay, make it past the seventh episode really yeah so I don't know if it's wow. where the seven comes from but it's just like so um, you know I've had some pod, you know uh, some podcasters that have launched new podcasts and uh, you know a lot of new podcasts I, I've been invited on some people's shows that are kind of new newbie podcasters and they're getting their show started and um you know once they've hit that eighth or ninth or tenth episode i'd send them out you know send them a message hey congratulations you, oh nice yeah you, you've made it past Good the for them. <laughs> wow now i think i think uh even with the explosion <clears throat> if you go hyper you know yeah niched i debate about doing one for like the eye you know i was talking about, about oh, my yeah. eye doctor yeah. but like um I debate about doing one now. I'd probably farm it out to somebody because mm-hmm. um, I don't know if I can hold a conversation with an eye doctor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, like, because yeah. dude, I don't know what to talk about, right. and I, I don't struggle with that disease mm-hmm. uh, with eye disease. I'm not going blind. Yeah. So yep. I can't relate. Yeah, you can't. It's you hard know? to. And 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 there's a clear, uh, you know, that's a clear indicator that if, if you're not passionate, you got to have passion on it. Because if you're not, you won't get past. 20 episodes at the max you know yeah, oh, just yeah. you fizzle out because you just don't have any interest um and and i've tried this with other podcasts that i just didn't have the passion for um that i've tried other you know with the comp- um you know uh oh, the composites. composites weekly you know it was i still like, think that i think about that I, it's still. a great yeah it's a great niche but i literally was bored you know even though i know all about you know i know so much about the industry and everything doing a podcast on it was i didn't have the enthusiasm like do, from doing a you know this this is what i'm enthusiastic about hmm. you know i wonder um, if you could do i don't know there's got to be something there on that one at some point i don't yeah. know maybe not but because you do got to have energy and passion you gotta have passion for it man, for it but if you could it, talk about growing a certain niche yeah. like in the composites industry yeah. uh, i don't know there might be you know that way you can tie the marketing and sales into it absolutely but i think you know i just i think in terms of you only have so much so many hours people only have so many hours in the day so you if you're going to do something you you talk about consistency if you're going to be consistent at it the the way you're consistent at something is to be passionate about something yeah and if you're not passionate about it it's going to rework to get you to do that time and time you know, on a regular basis mm-hmm. you know i've been um we're talking about <clears throat> i'm looking at trying to uh shoot a pilot episode for like a video yep video podcast mm-hmm. um and 
if I had a million dollars, and we had a, we've had several major setbacks because, uh, oh yeah, with filming and stuff. Video and is uh, man, it, it's just I, I, it's harder. I you know, for to you do. when it comes to video, because yeah. we're doing multi camera. Right. I mean, this we just got one camera and right. mics, and you know, we can rock it. It's easy. But this one, I'm gonna have two different people, um, two mics, two cameras. Yep. And so uh, it's it's kind of tricky, but. You know, if I had a million dollars in the bank, yeah. I would still do the show. Oh, absolutely. That's I absolutely would do the show, even with a million bucks in the bank, just because, man, I love it. It's interesting. Mm. I'm fascinated by people. You know, when human beings create something and, you know, more specifically a business, because it's hard to get somebody to actually hand you money. Yeah, right. And so the fact that a human being can be really successful in right. a business because a lot of people like it and yeah. handle money. I mean, I, I love that. I think that's so fascinating. Yeah. And so, um, I don't know. I mean, that's what, the reason I brought that up is just because of the, the whole passion and energy thing. You got to, yeah. I feel like you got to have something like, like that. If yeah. you, you know, or some other maybe external driver or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You know, I think, it, well, I think it just depends. Video is just only going to get bigger and bigger. So, I mean, if you're thinking about doing a podcast and that's you said if another thing i would do over again i might try to incorporate video more into my podcast if i were doing this starting over you know i started out strictly audio and we do the videos like and post these on youtube from time to time but i know from talking to experts in you know other experts in podcasting and other um you know other guys that are that are doing this that that have done um, that have done video podcasts, they're they're getting popular, and iTunes really does like. They're looking for you know podcasters to do video content um, because they they feel a need for that. You know, there's so many people doing audio, but they want to fill that need for you know video. They want to fill that void there because there's so few out there doing video. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. So we talked about the worst experience. Um, the get you know favorite guest yeah um i don't know i think we i think we've covered uh you know most of the things thank you all for listening thank you for uh for checking out this episode god bless have a great week